Oh dear. I'm getting full of beer now. I'm, I'm, I'm pretty full. Please don't make me do this anymore. Ah, shit. Here we go again. Can you believe it's been nearly three years since I last did a Megalodon reaction video? I know, me neither. Oh yeah, just really quickly, I want to address the slight elephant in the room. Many of you will have noticed that I am not in the Sharp Bites studio. And that's because I'm having a little bit of work done on my house at the moment, so I'll be recording up here in the Sharp Bites attic studio for a little while. Anyway, I've got a really special Sharp Bites episode for you all today, which is part of my collaboration with Verdant Brewery for Shark Week. Some of you might have seen the video that we did last Sunday where I explained how myself as Shark Bites and Verdant are working together to raise money to go directly towards shark research here in Cornwall. If any of you guys missed that video, you can see it here, or if YouTube is playing silly buggers and it's not appearing, I'll make sure to post it in the description as well. The whole overall point though of this collaboration between me and Verdant is to try and raise some really important funds that we can use to put towards shark research down here in Cornwall, specifically on blue sharks. So if you haven't done so already, please do check out the donation link in the description below. Anything small or large that you guys can give is massively appreciated by me. Today, however, we're bringing it back to the Shark Bites roots with a good old-fashioned Megalodon still alive beatdown. We'll have a look at some Megalodon video clips from the most reliable place in the world for factually correct information, the internet. And at the same time, we'll have a look at some of the bogus arguments as to why this huge shark is apparently still alive in our oceans. And I'm going to be doing it all while drinking my way through some of Verdant's shark-themed beers. The plan is to work my way up all the way from the cutesy 4.8% baby sharks to even sharks need water, then to the 8.5% whale sharks, and finally, we've got a very special special mystery monster shark beer that Verdant has just released that I'll have to polish off at the end. And believe me, looking at some of these ridiculous clips, I'm gonna need it. So strap yourselves in, grab your favorite beverage, sit back and enjoy. It's time for another Drunk Shark Science. This one, Baby Sharks, easily my favorite. Ah, oh, it's so citrusy, I love it. Right, let's have a look then. What have we got here? Recent sightings of Megalodon that may prove their existence. This should be good. Like and subscribe right now, or this spider will crawl on your face when you're sleeping. Right, that's it. I can't do that without a lot more beer in my system. <laughs> Can you imagine if I did that to you guys at the start of these Shark Bites videos? You better like and subscribe to Shark Bites or else a slug will slide up your nose in the shower. So you better like this video. <laughs> right, okay then, let's have a little look at some of the proof in this video. At first, we've got Mini Megalodon. Nowhere had its lunch and went away. All right, now look again. Although the shark is pretty average in size, the presence of jut in the flap of the shark is saying something else. Right, just ignoring the very obvious CGI here for a second. What did the commentator just say? The average in size, the presence of jut in the flap of the shark. <laughs> the presence of jut in the flap of the shark. What does that even mean? <laughs> no, got out more. That's literally just a made-up description of something on a made-up anatomical feature of a shark. <laughs> what on earth is a jut in the flap? I think from looking at the video, they may be suggesting that the jut in the flap is this bit here, which is a section of flesh just sticking out from the pectoral fin. Pectoral fin, guys, not flap. There are no flaps on these sharks. Apparently, though, according to the guy, a jut in the flap of the shark is something that's only seen in megalodons, so this footage here is clearly a baby meg that's headed up to the surface. And by the way, the footage was captured by marine biologists while collecting some facts regarding sharks and their behavior underwater. I like how he point out here, though, that the footage was taken by marine biologists, so that's some real credibility right there. You've got to believe it now. And yeah, that's what we marine biologists do. We just head out cage diving, collecting facts about sharks. Okay, gigantic catch. Let's have a look at this one. With only 5% of the ocean yet explored, there is a chance that megalodons are still alive. Yeah, so I hate this whole 5% of the ocean still to be explored thing. It's just a massive oversimplification and it always seems to be peddled out when it comes to this megalodon stuff. So yeah, the ocean is massive and there's still lots of it to be explored, but that 5% number there means that 5% of it has been directly observed by humans, either by us sending scuba divers down there or a submersible. We've actually mapped a lot more than that. I think it's something like 25%. And then the rest of the ocean is basically just nothingness. Sea, sediment, and nothingness. It's just a giant mass of ocean water and nothing else. Zero life, zilch, nada. So because of that, 
why would we even want to go to those places where there is nothing? There's virtually no point in sending people to large swathes of the ocean because there is nothing there. They could literally travel for hundreds and hundreds of miles in any direction and not see anything, especially an errant megalodon. Anyway, this particular gigantic catch that they're referring to is once again some more CGI of a whale getting launched out of the water by a breaching megalodon. Apparently. If we're thinking about the size of these two things though, that megalodon there has lifted the whale, which is probably the same size as itself, about 10 meters up into the air. <laughs> Come on, man. Where are they finding these videos? Like what CGI specialist is sat there spending hours and hours and hours making videos like this? <laughs> Wow, okay, I have polished off baby sharks far too quickly there. <laughs> Moving on to our next verdant beer then, we've got Even Sharks Need Water, the OG verdant shark beer. It's so good, that is a top-notch beer. Right, Even Sharks Need Water, get me through, what's this? Gigantic Marine Beast. Wasn't the last one called Gigantic something? Gigantic... Gigantic Catch. Yeah, okay, it was called Gigantic Catch. Well, now we've got Gigantic Marine Beast. Flying sight was caught. The footage shows a strangely big shark lurking around a tall ship off the coast of Massachusetts, measuring up to 26 meters in length. Now, that's that's just a basking shark. Just a simple, sweet, harmless basking shark. You've got the pointed snout, the rounded dorsal fin, and sort of mottled patterning on that dorsal side, and it is absolutely nowhere near 26 meters long, like this stupid video claims it to be. <laughs> they are pretty big sharks, to be fair. They tend to average somewhere around 6 to 9 meters long, but they are nowhere near 26 meters long, like this video is saying here. <laughs> I think this video itself is probably taken from the crow's nest of that ship, so they're looking down towards the water, and you can see that those people there at the bottom of the frame are a lot closer to the surface of that water than they seem. I reckon, though, looking at that basking shark, we're probably talking about an individual here that's maybe about seven meters or so, but it is kind of tough to say for sure. Right, okay. What's this? Megalodon with her baby. Megalodon with her baby. <laughs> A picture that went viral over the internet shows an unusual sighting. As per the theories, it could be a mama megalodon basking <laughs> around with her little one. Jesus wept. <laughs> what is this nonsense? I'm almost 100% sure you could ask any four-year-old to look at that picture and tell you what marine creature it is. Nope, not a megalodon, not even a shark, a whale. Yes, it's a whale. So whoever's decided to create the image has taken this particular picture here, as well as this picture of a bridge, and then just photoshopped them together to make it seem like it's absolutely massive. It doesn't even remotely look like a shark, let alone a bloody megalodon. Ah, right, okay, I've had it with that video. It's got too stupid for my brain to even try and comprehend it. Okay, let's head over to this one here. 10 megalodon sites that prove it exists. What do we reckon? Is this one going to be more stupid or less stupid than the last one? I mean, with a thumbnail like this, I've not really got my hopes up, to be honest. Mariana Trench sighting. In the footage, an enormous shark can be seen swimming past what appears to be an abandoned shark cage. Why does this one always get used? It's always the dodgy perspective ones as well, where you're kind of struggling to get an idea of the size of the things that are in the frame. So the commentator here says that this is an enormous shark that was seen in the Mariana Trench swimming next to an old shark cage. And I'm not sure there could be more factually incorrect information in one sentence. This particular sequence wasn't filmed in the Mariana Trench. It's actually shot in Suruga Bay in Japan. It's of course not a megalodon, but in fact a Pacific sleeper shark, which do get pretty big to be fair, sometimes around seven meters long. But the biggest lie that's going on here is this apparent abandoned shark cage. That right there is a bruv bait cage, probably no more than a couple of feet wide and a couple of feet long. So it's very small. And I think once you know that you get a much better appreciation of the size of that sleeper shark, which again, could be quite easily at least five meters long here. But that ain't no megalodon, I'm telling you now. This is helping. This is, this is definitely helping. To give you a sense of just how big this shark appears, imagine this. You could easily fit a family of four inside its mouth and still have space left over for a small side apartment. What? 
what is that measure of visualization that he's just used there? You can easily fit a family of four inside its mouth and still have space left over for a small side apartment. What do you mean a small side apartment? Like a flat? You're saying that you'd fit a family of four inside the mouth of this shark and a f***ing apartment? <laughs> this doesn't make any sense. It makes zero sense. <laughs> Why am I doing this? Why Why do I, I, I don't know why I watch these videos. It's, it's too painful. <laughs> right, that one's done. Moving on to Verdant's next shark beer. We've got the Verdant's Whale Sharks, the 8.4% double IPA. Here we go. Oh dear. Maybe we can fit a family of four in a small side apartment in the mouth of a whale shark. Can we do that? No. No, it's a stupid visualization. Right, what's next? Unusually young teeth. Okay, yeah, this one's great. You hear this teeth one all the time. Do you know what? I'm not even gonna let them describe this one to you. I'm gonna summarize it in record time. So back in 1875, a ship called the HMS Challenger pulled up two megalodon teeth from somewhere near Tahiti and stored them at the Natural History Museum in London. Nearly 85 years after they'd been dredged up from the bottom of the ocean, a study was written about them where it dated one of them to around 10,000 years old, as opposed to millions and millions of years old. That particular study suggested that Megalodon might have survived into today's geological epoch and people inferred that as Megalodon never went extinct and is still alive in today's oceans. But 10 years after this, another study came out that basically completely disproved the methodology that was used in the first study. That 10,000 year old tooth had probably eroded out of its original rock and then re-preserved into new rock making the fossil seem younger than it actually was. There was also something else about incorrect measurements of manganese dioxide and growth rates, but I'll be honest, I can't remember off the top of my head. The end. An unverified attack. Oh no, no, no way. We've got the CGI whale carcass again. I swear, if I see any more nonsense from Megalodon the monster shark lives, I am going to scream. <laughs> So if you couldn't tell that this was computer generated, the Discovery Channel literally tried to pass this off as real footage on Shark Week about 10 years ago, claiming that Megalodon had bitten this whale's tail clean off. Of course, Megalodon the monster shark lives was not real and was completely staged by the Discovery Channel. Back in the good old days of Shark Week, eh, when they made stuff up? <laughs> no. Okay then, we're gonna move on to this next one by YouTube channel Factsopedia because they seem like a reliable source of information. The coelacanth. Okay, yeah, I did wonder when we were gonna get a coelacanth reference in some of these videos. The rediscovery of this long missing species has led many to suspect that the megalodon has befallen a similar fate, hiding deep below the ocean. No, the megalodon hasn't befallen a similar fate. I just don't get how people can even possibly compare a giant prehistoric shark like Megalodon to a one meter long deep sea cave dwelling fish. Like, the two things are completely different to each other. Coelacanths remained undiscovered for years and years because funnily enough, we didn't have the ability to dive down to deep sea caves and see them back then. I think comparing the coelacanth rediscovery to a potential rediscovery of Megalodon is like comparing chalk and cheese. You just can't, so stop doing it. And if smaller fish can adapt to a whole new ecosystem, who's to say that the ultimate aquatic predator can't do the same? Maybe the Megalodon is a vegan now. No, no. No, no, <laughs> no, no. Megalodons have not adapted to modern day by switching to a plant-based diet. <laughs> a giant predatory shark whose main diet was literally whales cannot be sustained by plants. It's just not happened. Please, please stop this. Please don't make me do this anymore. In 2012, the Florida Coast Guard was sent on a mission to recover a group of people from a capsized boat. During their efforts to rescue those at sea, a high-speed camera capturing the rescue in action picked up what may be footage of the Meg. The shadow is extremely long. Marine biologists have claimed that the shark in the video is a whale shark. No, no. No marine biologists have claimed this to be a whale shark. They haven't. No scientist has claimed that ever. <laughs> Speaking of whale sharks, that's this next beer gone. And that brings us on to our final beer of the episode. Introducing to you all Verdant's newest shark themed beer, the reigning shark champion of the world, the dog. I feel like this episode couldn't have been complete if we weren't drinking it out with a Megalodon themed beer. How fitting. I'm not sure I'm gonna survive this triple IPA, guys, but here we go. Oh wow, that is a unit of a beer. Delicious though, wow. You can taste that that is a triple IPA. 
Number four, Google Earth. Somehow, someone browsing on Google Earth discovered a captured aerial image of a shark off the coast of Iraq and the discovery isn't entirely out of the realm of possibility. If any skeptics are watching, feel free to explain this one in the comments below. This may be as close as we get to definite proof. Hold on, what is this supposed to be? Is that the Google Earth proof? Is that the proof? <laughs> that doesn't even look remotely like a shark. It's not even the right shape to be a shark. <laughs> Come on, there's no pectoral fins, there's no caudal fins, it's just a curved white line. <laughs> How could this possibly be definite proof? <laughs> oh man, I'm getting full of beer now. I'm, I'm, I'm pretty full. <laughs> Now, I'd say that it's pretty obvious a fair few of the videos that we've been watching today are a couple of years old, maybe even more than that. So you do start to get the same thing cropping up again and again. But thanks to the hideous rise of AI generated images and videos, we now have a fresh new locker of Megalodon sightings. Like this one here of Megalodon <laughs> surfing a wave next to a cargo ship and then launching itself into the side of the boat, defying all laws of gravity in the process and very handily doing it all in slow motion. <laughs> or perhaps this one here that shows an apparent megalodon washed up on a beach being filmed from a helicopter. Do you know what? This one's actually not half bad to be fair, bar the fact that it's once again given the megalodon seven bloody gill slits. <laughs> seven gill slits. Mm -mm. I'm not having it. In the end though, all head honcho dons have to step aside for a new don and the old guard is replaced by the new. For Megalodon, that was the ancestors of great white sharks who were smaller, faster, and didn't have to eat as much food. And so millions of years ago, our don really did go extinct. I promise guys, it, it's gone. I think that one of my biggest retorts to Megalodon being still alive in our oceans today would be that if it did survive today, Surely there would be other shark species from the Mayo slash Pliocene era that also survived as well, but there is no modern day evidence of them either. Now I swear, if you lot below start to rapid comment Megalodon is still alive, I am going to lose it. <laughs> Don't do it. I swear, I'm gonna lose it. I am gonna lose it. I'm considering myself officially defeated in this beer challenge. The Don is tasty as hell, but I am so full of beer right now. Now, there was a reason for this beer field rant about Megalodon. <laughs> What was it? <laughs> yes, okay, that's right. We're trying to raise funds for important shark research down here in Cornwall. So anything that you guys can give is so appreciated by all of us. And a little bit later on this year, I'm going to be able to show you guys exactly where that money has gone to. Hopefully putting on a fancy satellite and camera tag onto a blue shark right here in Cornwall. Guys, if you enjoyed this video, please, please do give it a like. I've got so many exciting things planned for season 10 of Shark Bites. We've also got Frank and Shark coming out on the Discovery Channel for Shark Week on Thursday, the 24th of July, 10 p.m. Eastern time. So it would be so good to see as many of you there as possible. For now though, guys, it's bedtime for me. But for those of you that haven't been drinking triple strength IPA beers all evening, I reckon you might quite enjoy this video right here, which explains all about the Shark Bites Verdant collaboration that we're doing. So make sure you go and check it out.